So the iPhone 8 is a very interesting iPhone right now. And since I did my first, you know, early year review of this device, it's actually pretty insane to me how many things have changed with this specific iPhone. Now, I wouldn't consider this iPhone a bad iPhone by any means, and I think it's still completely relevant in the grand scheme of things from Apple. But when I look at what they've done with the lower end iPhones, including this specific device, it's actually pretty insane to me. Now, very, very quickly, this iPhone went from being one of the, you know, still higher supported and iPhones from Apple to now being the lowest supported iPhone. Apple has, you know, taken out the iPhone 6s and iPhone 7 from their whole entire lineup of being supported with software. And now we're in a situation where the iPhone 8 is actually the lowest supported iPhone right now, which is so crazy to me. Earlier this year, it was the third in place. Now it's the first in place to be removed, which is so crazy. Now I'll get into more details about everything else, but when it comes down to the body, it still has stayed consistent. As most of us know, it has the same body for the most part as the iPhone SE third generation. So even though it's a data design, I will say because the iPhone SE 3, it's still making this design live a little bit longer. So for better or for worse, it has that going for it. 4.7 inch panel on the front, Touch ID 2. Luckily, nothing still has happened with my iPhone 8, but my other iPhone 8 does have a cracked back, which is very unfortunate. But I'm glad this thing has a glass back because those things typically feel and perform better over time, in my opinion, in terms of longevity and just the premiumness of a device over standard plastic backs. Now, those are everything, you know, from the outside pricing wise, it's gone down a little bit too. But the biggest thing is iOS 16. And this is where I want to direct your focus to. I've installed iOS 16 on my iPhone 8. It's been, I think, about a week and a half about almost. We were still on beta one when I'm recording this audio. And I will say it's a little bit of a, you know, double edged sword. So on one hand, I'm glad this thing is getting iOS 16. And I'm glad it now I guess it's not unsupported. So it's still getting support for hopefully another two years or so. But the bad thing is, is, is that the amount of features that were limited from Apple, it's insane to me. Like it makes absolutely no sense for them to go ahead and limit these many features on the specific device. And they're like not the big features. We can still edit our lock screen. We can go ahead and, you know, unsend iMessages and stuff. But it's still very strange to me that Apple would go and limit as many features as they did on this device. And that in and of itself was very, very surprising to me. Now, other than that, when I take a step back, like I mentioned, I'm glad this thing got support. I'm glad this thing is probably going Going to continue to get support for the next few years, but this kind of puts this iPhone in a weird situation because before you could easily buy this iPhone and still feel like you were going to get a long supported phone. But if Apple goes ahead and switches away from what they've kind of been doing and they start shortening the lifespan of these devices, and that is going to put the iPhone 8 in a very strange situation. It's almost going to feel like you shouldn't even purchase this iPhone anymore because it's probably going to get unsupported any time now. And I would hate to be in a position where I would recommend this type of iPhone to a bunch of people and they just don't feel like buying it or, you know, they buy it and they just end up like having to update next year. And this is probably one of those iPhones now, which is kind of sad to think about. Now, when I take a step back and I look at this iPhone and I look at all the other iPhones surrounding it, including the 6S, this is probably the lowest supported iPhone and the lowest iPhone I would recommend people to buy. In terms of the hierarchy of all the iPhones that are supported, this is the lowest end iPhone. And even though right now it's still performing fairly well on iOS 16, at least in my opinion, battery life is probably not going to be that great but it's still performing fairly well, you know, much better than I thought. I'm still a little hesitant to recommend purchasing this iPhone, especially if you want to buy an iPhone for many years from now. If you want to buy an iPhone and you want to go ahead and just keep it for a year and then move on, well, this is not a bad device, but I, even though if iOS 16 was perfect, what if iOS 17 doesn't even come to this device? Well, that's going to go ahead and put this device in another weird position as well. And I just wouldn't want to be the one to recommend buying this iPhone if you don't have to, even the iPhone 10, to be honest. So what I would recommend doing is if you're in the market for an iPhone 8, I would say buy it if you want to, but just keep in mind, it could be unsupported any year now, which is kind of sad, but I still like the iPhone 8. I still think it has a lot of value within it and it still has a lot of power within it, but I just think of the weirdest decisions that Apple is making, it's kind of put this iPhone in a very strange box. So I would love to hear your opinion on this. Let me know in the comments section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.